What is going on everybody? Boylon here and welcome back to another Marvel Strike Force video. And here today we have part two of the Infestation series. Actually, I think there, there may, might just only be part two, so this is the, the final one. And the Legend of Swarm continues. So, <laughs> yes, now he's at level 90. <laughs> he's on his way to level 95, mark my words. And uh, you know what? I'm thinking of actually giving him a blue four as well, but I just don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on uh, which of the ISOs that I want to go for, uh, mainly because I don't know if I want to push more damage or if I want to guarantee that his focus will be up to snuff. We'll talk about that more uh, in this video. We're going to take a look at a deep dive of the stats of the four rework characters, Swarm, Ant-Man, Black Widow, and Yellow Jacket, not particularly in that order. And uh, we're going to talk about the reworks that each of them received, which one is, which ones are a little bit better than others. There, There is, uh, you know, one character that is going to be a little bit better than the others. And why I'm really excited for this team, because I think a lot of people probably on the back of the first video were like, boy, line, you're still crazy. But hey, you know, at least I'm being excited about something, right? And so you can't fault me for that. So uh, if you're ready to go, let's boil this down. Now, uh, it looks like we're starting with Ant-Man because he's the first on my spreadsheet. Some of you guys may have seen this before. If you're a longtime viewer of the channel, then uh, I used to do things like this in the past. Uh, the last one I personally remember doing was for Bionic Avengers. I may have done one after that, uh, but I used to do these kind of stat rework for reworked teams, and we would take a look at the old and then the new stats and then how it reflects now. Now, some things to point out before we get started. Uh, the stats reflect outside of war and any passives that work outside of war. Uh, there is, especially, most of the stat passives, admittedly, is with uh, Spidey, Spidey Big Time. It's not actually to do with the other characters. Uh, Swarm does have a damage passive, and he does give it to the team in war defense, but outside of war, uh, Swarm only gets it for himself. Same with Spidey Big Time, actually. He gets a, a pretty big health and focus passive i'm pretty sure but he doesn't give it to the team unless it's in war defense so that's just some things to note also these stats are based on level 85 seven yellow five red blue iso three gear tier 16 used to be gear tier 15 when i did it before but i think it's it's okay to do 16 now and stark tech 25 percent now some people might wonder how i got these stats and you basically just take the bare bones, uh, the, what the stats are with no red stars. So basically like level 85, gear tier 16, seven yellow, and that's it. And that's like the base stats that they would have. And then you take, uh, then you do the multiplication of the actual base stats. And then you also add on the, uh, the red stars, the ISO blue that you see in the different columns here. And that's added in uh, basically multiplied from the new stats. And then you add them all up together. This, it's a math for you. Maybe people didn't care. But anyways, <laughs> that's just how I get there. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about Ant-Man. So he received 131% in health, a boost, 98 damage, 71 armor, 52 focus, 58 resist. And he actually got a speed bump from 100 to 119. Now, this is quite sizable because 100 is pretty bad. Uh, might not sound bad, but, you know, the it's... it's I think it's average now. <laughs> you know, like a lot of the characters do have good characters that have good speed are typically in the 115 to 225 kind of range. If you're less than 115, it's pretty bad in my opinion. Uh, and so these are the new totals now in terms of his stats. Now, what's more interesting is not the actual numbers or the values of the stat, because this is going to vary whether, you know, what level you are and such. This is just like a ratio in some ways. Uh, but it's actually the rating in terms of where he lands in proportion and, and the other characters where they land in terms of other characters. So he is a top 35 health stat now, which is equivalent to Squirrel Girl. So, uh, yeah, it could be could have been a little bit higher, but it's Ant-Man, right? So, I mean, I don't know if you really expected much. He also has some evades and things like that in his kit, and we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, but here's what's interesting. His dad Damage stat is a top 20 damage stat equivalent to Rogue. Now, we'll get to that in the notes section, or you can skip ahead and read ahead. Uh, his armor is 50 to 75. A lot of the characters seem to have this stat number. It's just like, you know, he's equivalent to a lot of characters, so that's just a huge range there. Uh, Kate Bishop uh, for Focus, which is top 70, which isn't super good. We'll talk about the Focus part, though. And Resistance, which is uh, equivalent to Miles, or, uh, miles from... 
Reaver, um, Web Warriors. <laughs> I was like, what team is he on now? I forgot. <laughs> Young Avengers, Web Warriors. And so he has a huge damage stat, but his, he has a poor skill ratio. His damage percentages are not great. And so even though his damage stat is really high, it's probably not going to be reflective. Definitely not outside of War Defense. You might see it, though, in War Defense because of Swarm giving additional damage to the team in that mode. Uh, I would probably use a Skirmisher ISO on him if you are going to build him up because it gives not only more focus, which he might need, and also he does get assists now in this kit. And yeah, he does gain focus in war defense with big time Spidey. I do want to kind of take a look though at some of his, after we do each of the characters. So let's zoom in a little bit more if I can. Do, 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 do. Uh, that was big time Spidey's kit. We kind of jumped around here. So Ant-Man upgrade, his basic, his special. This is really what's kind of important. I think that's too far, actually. Let's zoom out a little bit. My apologies, everybody. Special. So in war defense, yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's a war defense. Uh, clears revive once. This attack will also have the additional effects of the character's ultimate. So this part is in war defense, but not all of them are. And that's really important to note. So the ultimate on stomp in war defense, if Spider-Man big time is an ally, clear revive once from the primary target, but some of this other stuff is not specifically war defense. So attack all enemies for 320, plus apply slow for two turns to the primary target, and then one turn of slow to all additional enemies. This is outside of war defense. Uh, this part here, if Spider-Man big time is an ally, this attack will also have the additional effects of this character's special, aka the ability block and all that stuff. But this is outside of war defense as well. You just need Spidey big time on the team. So this may be hard to do, uh, especially, uh, you know, not in a Dark Dimension context because he's uh, Spidey is, is City, uh, you know, you, I don't know, Cosmic Crucible, possibly. There's And that's another angle that I didn't really talk about in the first video was that what if that they actually do this, they use this team potentially as text in Cosmic Crucible in a future season? And I, I don't think that's that's really out of the realm of possibility, honestly, when they've done things like Rebirth as a team that was a raid team that we didn't really expect to see in Cosmic Crucible either. So really hard to uh, really hard to say, and there might be room for this team down the line as well in that game mode. So just be cautious about that one too. Uh, his passive, uh, the only thing that they really added was on Infestation or Pimtech Ally Turn Gain Assist now. Now this is really important though, because basically that means that uh, Ant-Man's going to be punching on his basic on every single turn of the other infestation characters uh, and this is outside of war defense as well which is why i kind of recommended the skirmisher iso because it's going to be a lot like the sort of the nebula infinity watch mechanic or the dark beast um that team's mechanics <laughs> death seed on in dark dimension on spawn you know you're probably not i don't even i'm not even gonna you're not don't use them in dark dimension i really don't think it's a great idea but that's just me so let's move on to black widow now and uh, her kits are interesting you, you know we saw some pretty sizable buffs to her health and damage and just take a look anyways uh, now he, she has the same damage stat as ant-man top 20 same as rogue uh the other problem is again just like ant-man that her damage ratios aren't super good but she does have bleed in her kit when she uses her ultimate things like that so it's not bad hp is still pretty bad uh armor is not very good but you know to be expected i think a little bit but her focus and resistance is quite good top 40 equivalent to hella for focus and resistance equivalent to dormammu for whatever reason that uh, black widow needs that much resistance i don't know uh, her special now applies immunity for two turns to infestation team members and uh, of course gains that focus from big time spidey so i would say that's probably the biggest thing that's improved uh, to black widow's kit was that part of her special that got changed uh it does and she also does clear negative effects a uh, one negative effect from infestation allies but it's this immunity for two turns to self in infestation allies that's going to be crazy because uh that's going to apply basically right away that should be her first skill that she ends up using uh on her turn uh, whether it's on war defense or otherwise and this is also available outside of war defense as well so things like cosmic crucible this will work there too uh her ultimate is pretty much the same otherwise it cannot be blocked and gains 1000 percent extra focus and it guarantees the chain uh, to three targets and applies bleed so what iso do you want for her i i, I don't know it's not going to be raider it's going to be skirmisher or striker probably uh i would probably maybe even striker honestly uh just because i don't think she's probably going to need that extra focus because she's going to get this on her ultimate and the basics pretty good as it sits so yeah i don't think that you're going to need skirmisher this time around but make sure you do have a skirmisher on uh ant-man because i think that's going to be really important let's talk about swarm 
Swarm is my, my, my love here. So, Swarm got a 56% health, 31 damage, 45 focus, and 41 resistance boost. And he's getting an armor boost of which we don't know. So he's going from zero to something. That's what they said in the blog post. Uh, they said a medium armor boost. I, whatever that means, I don't know. So I don't know where that's going to land, but either way, it's better than the zero that he has right now. In terms of his stats, it's actually pretty good. So his health stat is top 30 equivalent to Wong. And Wong is the tank for Darkhold. So that will tell you a little bit. His damage is also 15. Top 15 equivalent to Red Hulk. Believe it or not, he has an equivalency in damage to Red Hulk. But of course, like I said with the other characters, huge damage stat and the poor, I wouldn't say poor skill damage ratios, but it's not as good as someone like Red Hulk, obviously, right? So he's not going to be as strong as Red Hulk, but I think from a damage stat perspective, it's just kind of funny to see that. Uh, his focus is top 50 and his resistance is really, really bad. So there's that too. Now, the few things to note for Swarm, though, he has a 25% damage passive. Uh, this is shared with the team in War Defense, like I mentioned. He now heals on turn uh, for 20% of its hit points, and he flips two negative effects. So whether or not this counters this part where he takes zero, uh, where he takes a bunch of damage if he doesn't have any charges, I don't know. You know, is that going to uh, negate that part? We'll have to see and find out. His special also got a huge buff, and it can now do about 630% damage. So I want to kind of point that out because that's a huge buff to his kit for his special. So before, for those probably don't know because you never use Swarm, you basically needed to apply every debuff to continue the bonus attacks. Attack for 250 and apply Disrupt. If the primary was disrupted, uh, then bonus attack for more damage and do off and defense down. And they do it again and apply it slow as long as he had these debuffs. But now with the change, you know, he actually does it guaranteed. So it does the damage, bonus attack with defense down, bonus attack with slow. So you're getting all three of the hits regardless. And that's a huge percentage of damage given his uh, damage stat. So this might actually translate pretty well. And uh, unfortunately, though, the part where he follows up with his ultimate only works on war defense. But it's not true on the other side so when he does his ultimate outside of war defense he does do the additional effects without losing additional charge of the character's special so this does happen outside of war defense but it's only on the primary target so whoever that you are uh, primary targeting with swarms ultimate so do keep that in mind as well and again the part where he heals for 20 percent on his turn so will that counter the fact that he takes hits uh, when he's out of charges uh, we'll soon see especially for me i'll be able to kind of test that out because i'm leveling him up quite a bit and i'm really excited to see where this goes now, Yellow Jacket is the last one, and fortunately, he did actually get the uh, worst end of the stick. Maybe that means he doesn't need it, or I don't know. I mean, he should have been the damage dealer, probably, of the team. He's also a blaster character, but he's a glass cannon. Uh, his health is pretty low. It's equivalent to Spider-Man Noir, which is not great. It's a top 140 in the game. He has a blaster character, though, so I'm not sure what I expected. Uh, damage stat-wise, it's not terrible. It's less than Swarm, because he doesn't have that damage passive, but it's equivalent to Hela, so... Not bad, given what his kit does, right, with his ultimate hitting multiple targets. Uh, his armor, focus, and resistance are all pretty average. Anything around this mark gets the yellow uh, shading, and so that's, it's nothing nothing crazy. Uh, something to note is, of course, that he didn't get anything. He, he barely got anything in his rework, and that's super disappointing. Not that I have my yellow jacket built up very high, uh, but yeah, all of that was just kind of the stuff they added to the other characters, which is just repeating the same attack. The special and the ultimate is on war defense, though the war, yeah, the ultimate is also on war defense. So that's disappointing. So Yellow Jacket is basically pigeonholed into war defense, but some of the other characters are not, including, uh, including Black Widow, you know, actually is a decent character and Swarm and of course Spidey big time. So who are the best characters of this team, in my opinion? Obviously, it's going to be Swarm. That's why I'm building him. I think he's going to be crazy. There is, I think, some arguments to be made for Black Widow. And she is actually very cheap to build uh, if you're considering using her maybe for Dark Dimension 6 or any Dark Dimension 6. She's only two gear pieces required, and she's a skill character. So I think there is an argument to be made, especially if you might be considering using characters like OG Cap out of Rebirth for um, Dark Dimension Global as well, because Black Widow and Cap would actually synergize together with some of their old existing stuff. So not too bad there. 
Ant-Man, uh, this is a dark horse. I'm not sure. I'm going to take him to at least gear tier 14. I just don't know if I'm going to push him too much further. And unfortunately, Yellow Jacket, when I do end up building him up, it's probably just going to be stuck at gear tier 14 as well. So I'm going to be going pretty hard into Swarm and Spidey big time. But with regards to the other three, I'm not sure how far I'm actually going to push it. I just think the Swarm is going to be a pretty big contender. And who doesn't love a lot of bees? I'm not just doing it for the memes, but I... <laughs> I actually do think that this team will have some value, like I mentioned in the first video. So uh, that's the end of this stat deep dive. Uh, you know, Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this team. Are you going to be building it at all? Who are you going to be primarily focusing on? Do you love Swarm like I do? I'd love to know all of that down below. And of course, until next time, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you all later on the next Marvel Strike Force video. Boylan, signing out.